So we've now given a proof of the Schwartz lemma. Now let's look at some applications of the Schwartz lemma. So instead of having a holomorphic map from the disk into the complex plane, let's suppose we have a holomorphic map between two disks, the first one of radius R1 into a disk of radius R2. And we'll assume similarly to the Schwartz lemma that the origin is mapped to the origin. If we transform the variable and look at f of z over r1, then what we end up with is a map from the unit disk into the disk of radius r2. Of course, this is still going to be a holomorphic map. And if we divide the image by r2, then we end up with a holomorphic map from the disk to itself. Now, of course, the origin is still mapped to itself, so we can apply the Schwartz lemma to say that this map is distance decreasing. In particular, if we flesh out the, the algebra, what we end up with is that the absolute value of f of z is less than or equal to the ratio of r2 over r1 times the absolute value of z. Now, if we suppose that f is holomorphic everywhere, namely, we'll suppose that f is entire, then for any r1 and r2 positive, such that f maps this disk of radius r1 into some disk of radius r2, then the absolute value of f of z is of course controlled by r2 over r1 times the absolute value of z. And we can take r1 to be arbitrarily large since this is just the disk in the domain. And since f is holomorphic everywhere, we can essentially take this disk to be infinite. But that then tells us that the absolute value of f of z is zero. And we arrive at the famous Liouville theorem saying that a bounded entire function has to be constant.